All right, we're ready to start class? All right, let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Pray that you would continue to be with us as we uh, uh, begin another school year and, uh, and as we um, continue to delve into your word. Pray that you would guide us and direct us. Help us to learn uh, about you and, uh, and how you affect our lives. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, um, I think I've printed off like five copies. And there's like Someone six, six of you guys here. So um, if you guys can share, that would be great. Because um, I'm going to need one too. So you guys might. Have. And you guys can't sit at the same table? Fine. Here you go. No, it's fine. That way somebody else can do it. All right. <clears throat> So over the last uh, couple of weeks, we've been we've been covering um, the Word of God, and today's going to be our final study on the Word um, of God. Uh, actually, all of our Bible studies will be on the Word of God, but this is the focus on the Word of God. So, um, the first week we talked about uh, who is the Word of God, and we've come up with the Word of God is who? Jesus, thank you. I'm glad you guys learned that one. Um, uh, we also learned last week that God's word is active; that God's word, God's word actually accomplishes things. And um, and so now to kind of draw it all together, uh, we know that Jesus is the word, and we know that the word accomplishes things. But what does that mean for you and for me? Okay, why is that important? Um, Luther has a has a lot of really good things. Was, I started off with um, with Luther trying to, to delve into what he thinks, and uh, it'll be kind of a jumping off point for us um, as we get going. So, All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and, and read through this. Um, we'll have a couple of doing. Uh, I'll read the first paragraph, and then uh, we'll have somebody else read uh, the second paragraph, and then somebody read the third, like with the Bible verse there, and then somebody read the last one. So who's going to read? The, I'll read the first one. I'll read the Luther belief. Who's got Luther's concepts? The second paragraph. Rachel, who's got the, the Bible verse there? Hey, Sam. <clears throat> Last one. Jay, there we go. All right. Luther believed that the church was born and sustained solely by the word. Preached, heard, read, sung, and believed. That's my paragraph. All right. Luther's concept of the word of God permeated his entire theology. It always concluded the Bible, but it also was much more than this. For Luther, God's word, God's word was first, first of all, the primordial that word of creation that brought in, into being all things from nothing. And God said, um, let there be, and there was. Um, yet this word of creation was not simply a thing from the ancient past, but continued to sound throughout the that creation sustaining, making new, making life possible without, uh, making life possible without which no life could be. Not just God has made the heavens and the earth, but God has made me, uh, my eyes and ears and all my senses. Um, and it is this, this same creative word that comprehensively also became flesh. This means, uh, this means that the very life and light of creation became inseparable from Jesus who embodied and proclaimed this creative, spirit-filled word, the broken, 
dark and chaotic world. This was, for Luther, the, yeah, the primary sense of the word of God. Jesus was the preacher. This was not accidental or incidental. It was the crucial core of how God deals with his people. Okay. <coughs> yeah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Luke 4, 18 through 19, Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. The last one? Thus, when it comes to the Bible, it too was the word of God, but especially because it was a witness to the same Jesus. Through its recorded histories, its laws, its poetic and prophetic utterances, and its apostolic testimonies, the Bible is the word that urges us onward toward Christ, or as Luther put it, was Christum Tribet. Thus, the Old Testament was like the swaddling claws of Christ, clothing God's great plan of salvation with eightfold acts of judgment and deliverance. The ancient people described therein uh, appear to us as a kind of mirror of life, indicating by their encounters with God and His Word the range of responses in both faith and, and unbelief. All of this would point to God's def, uh, definitive act of judgment and deliverance exhibited in the death and resurrection of Jesus. All right, so <clears throat> a lot of stuff there. Um, as, as we look at uh, what Luther's thought on, on the Word is, um, one of the things that, that comes out, um, and, and we've already covered this, is that it, it's uh, the primordial word of creation that brought into being all things from nothing. All right, so we talked about that, especially the very first week, uh, and, and, and even last week. Um, we talked about how, how God's word works. It actually does something, okay? And, and so Luther understood that. He believed that as well. He knew that um, God's word was something that uh, actually brought into existence everything. And, and, and I know that, that, that for me that concept has always been kind of hard to understand because, you know, as, a, as a, a, a science teacher, that was one of the things that, you know, we've always talked about, right? Things, things were, they, they had a, a, a substance. Right? And, and all of a sudden, you know, we, we look at science and how these substances change from one form to another. Right? <clears throat> Whenever you have a, uh, a plant, the plant takes nutrients from the soil and, and, it, and it goes up into the plant and then the other animal eats the, the plant and then another animal eats that animal. And when that animal dies, all these nutrients go back into the soil, kind of starting this whole, this whole circle again. Right? The circle of life. But... The concept that everything that we have here was not always here is kind of hard to, to understand, right? We, we always think of this as, you know, the, the, the circle of life, you know, the, the rain goes up and it comes down and it goes to all the skin. So the fact that God's Word is so powerful that it can make, bring things into existence that never existed before. It's just, it's hard to understand. It's hard to believe. And, and, and that's, uh, but, but that's, but that's Luther and saying that this is this primordial word, this uh, very beginning, the early stages of everything, was what brought everything into existence. And he understood that. And, and that was a huge part of what he understood. Um, but he also understood that, that, the Bible itself, right? What, what we have here um, in the scriptures <clears throat> is God's word as well, okay? And and we talked about this. Uh, I believe this was the, the, one of the first ones that we talked about. What was the fact that um, in this Bible, what do we have? What do we have here? Thomas, what do we have here? Uh, God's Word. Okay, we've got God's Word, but how is it God's Word? How is it 
God's word. How do how do we know <clears throat> why why did why did uh, Isaiah write what Isaiah write wrote right. wrote yes Sam. Uh, it was the inspired word of the Holy Spirit writing through the authors. It's the inspired word of God written through the authors, whether it was Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, whatever. Um, it was written through, it was God's word transmitted to us through these people, right? Um, so, so in that sense, right, it is, it is what, what God said. When we look at, at Jesus being the word, the, how do these two mesh? How do they fit together? The fact that Jesus is the Word and the Bible is the Word. How do they fit together? When we look at the Gospels, especially the New Testament, right? How do we know that the New Testament is the Word of God? How is it, in a sense, Jesus? What do we have in the New Testament? Okay, what are the story of the Gospels? What are they all about? The life and teachings of Jesus, right? So it, it tells us first of all about Jesus, the way he, you know, where he grew up, uh, his ministry, his um, life, death, and resurrection, right? Which in itself is the good news, right? Talking about salvation. What is what are Paul's teachings? What are they all about? Are those things that he just came up with on his own? What about Peter? Peter just, yeah, this sounds good. I'm going to put it out there. What are they teaching? Are they teaching their own thing? They're writing letters to churches on how to maintain the church and preach Jesus' word. Specifically, preaching Jesus' word, right? So... <clears throat> It's just like if I were to if I were to teach you how to make an airplane, a paper airplane, right? I gave you specific instructions on how to make a paper airplane. And then I say, go out and teach all the other kids how to make paper airplanes. Right? Would you be teaching them your plan, your no, your design? No. You'd be teaching mine. So in, in essence, you're going out and you're proclaiming what I have taught them, taught you, right? Same thing with Jesus, right? He teaches, um, you, you see this a lot, right? When Jesus is out there uh, proclaiming all the stuff to the crowds, right? The, the, whenever he's doing the, God, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, whenever he's out preaching to all the crowds, um, you see it how after he gets done with all this, the disciples are like, so... That's a hard teaching. Where do you get that? And so Jesus explains to them a little more clearly what, what does this mean? Um, the, the parable of the of the um, of the soil, right? Uh, he, he he explains that to them. So when these guys, after Jesus dies and they they're going out, they're being dispersed throughout the world because of of persecution, which is really an interesting thing, right? People are trying to kill the church, and what they end up doing is dispersing it all around. And, and actually spreading the church. It's really, it's really kind of funny. But, but they're going out. They're not preaching their own things. They're preaching what, what Christ taught them. And so when we look at the scriptures, it is God's word, as in not just given to us by, by God through the, through the authors, right? But it is also Jesus, right? It's his word. It's his name. But it is his word, it's part, of, it's part of him that he breathed out for us to hear. Now, as we look at, at how it works, right, um, I, 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 I love this, this, uh, these verses from Luke and from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's flavor. Favor. Not the Lord's flavor. All right. As, as you look at the... Spicy Jesus. 
spicy <laughs> Jesus. Well, you know, probably at whenever he was turning the tables over, and then yeah, a little spicy, yeah. Um, so when we look at these at these verses right here, um, what is this focusing on? Look at those verses. I want everybody to look at those verses. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you've got, if you, it's right there printed on your paper. Just look at it, and and then two. If you're, if you're, uh, Sam, turn around, talk to Thomas, okay? Nick, James, you guys talk about it. You guys talk about it here. What are those verses focusing on? I'll give you a minute. A minute. I want you guys to look at those. Tell me what they're about. After after a minute. with my watch faces and, and some of the watch faces they don't, they don't have a second hand I mean it's just I'm just going to start at the balance proclaiming gospel alright it's been a minute okay so uh, Thomas Sam what did you guys think? what are the what is the what is this focusing on proclaiming the gospel Generic, but we'll, we'll give you that. What do you What do you guys think? What is this about? Um, we talked about how they were they were saying that none of their none of the stuff they were doing was of their own will or power. It was just God sent them out to do this, so He He gave them the Holy Spirit, and through that gave gave them His power, and that was what allowed them to preach and do miracles. Yeah, and <clears throat> and and it's. And, and it's, it's, yes, it is that, the fact that they have, but it's also the fact that when the Spirit is on them, right? Uh, John talks about this in, in Revelation. Um, the, uh, when I was in the Spirit, I, I, I started writing these things. I saw these things when I was in the Spirit, right? Um, it, so it's like, it's, it's more than just the, the power, but it's also, um, you are there, I'm saying it's more than just specifically for that purpose. To be in that spirit is whenever you go out, kind of like in the stead, right? In the place of, of Jesus, right? They're going out in his place. Okay, so that means that it's not, it's not just their teachings, it's not just their thoughts, it is um, like the good news, the gospel that you guys were talking about. They're going out in that spirit to be able to proclaim the good news. Um, Strengthened by his word, though, right? So that's a really good, good aspect, good point. Yeah. And, and I really like that last word to help the people, right? To proclaim the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, liberty to those who are oppressed. Why is that important? Okay. Why is this important for you guys? Because he's chosen us to do the same thing. Okay. But where were we at one point? At one point we were all dead in our trespasses and sins. Right? We all needed God's salvation. We all needed God's mercy. We all, at one point, were deaf and blind. 
Um, how many times have you heard, when we hear the scriptures, we talk about um, uh, those who have ears, let them hear. Have you ever thought about what that, what that means? That means, Nick, you've got ears. Decorated pretty nicely, right? You've got ears, so hear. Is that what Jesus is saying? Those who have ears, let them hear. Is it more than just those who have physical ears? Now, what does it mean then? No? No? It was like uh, Jesus pro or Jesus said that they should start preaching to the Gentiles and everyone instead of just the Jews. So it's everyone who's able to hear the word of God should hear the word of God. It's not just... You're, you're, you're getting there. Um, James. Yeah. Uh, in how many days was the world created? Uh, six. Six days, God rested on the seventh day. Do you believe that? Why do you believe that? Because I have faith. It's not for any rational or scientific reason. Okay. Um, yeah. Exactly, right? Now, if I go out to some guy on the street who is an atheist or whatever, and I said, God created the world in six days, and he's going to say, you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. Right? Does he have ears? Yeah, he's got ears. But does he hear the word? So, so this is a this is this is very important, right? Yes, everybody's supposed to hear. It. We want everybody to hear it. But it's more than just the physical act of hearing God's word. It is having faith in it, believing it, under and maybe not necessarily understanding it because. How do we understand the mind of God? Well, we can't not tell not till Christ comes back, and then we will be able to see that and understand it. So, so when we're talking about here, right? Proclaim good news to the poor, liberty to the captives, sight, uh, recovering of sight to the blind, liberty to those who are oppressed. Um, we're talking about helping people to have life. Now, some people look at that and say that that's that Jesus was kind of like a pastor Schultz's sermon today, right? They, they, they want that physical aspect of God's of God's work, right? Lord, I'm gonna have a surgery coming up and I want it to go well. Now, should we not pray for that stuff? No, that's, it's fine, we do. But for some people, that's all it is. It's just how God can help me in this life. That's where you have people like Joel Osteen, right? And it's, you know, your best life now, right? It's all about you give to God, and he's going to bless you. You're going to have thousands and thousands of dollars. And I mean, and look at me. I've got cars, and I've got planes, and, and this huge church, and i got these really nice suits and pretty hair and pretty teeth, right? It's about the here and now. I watched one of his sermons one time, and in 30 minutes, he mentioned Jesus exactly this many times. Because it's about what can be done for the physical world that we live in. This is not what Jesus is talking about. This is not what Isaiah was talking about. Yes, we want those things for other people, and, and we try to help them to get those things. But what is more important? Good news. Salvation. Right? So if we were to look at this, right, um, uh, right, kind of covered a lot of these things. Um, Matthew 8, 16 says, That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. Right? Matthew 17, 18 says, Jesus rebuked the demons, and, he came out, and, the, and it came out of him, demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. All right? So we know that, that, that Jesus was doing these things, and it was helping them physically. A lot of these signs, though, were given not 
not to just help people, but to fulfill what was being said in Isaiah. And the point of that was that they would understand who Jesus was. Remember, John said uh, uh, there are many things that were written that Jesus did that were not written in this book, but these are written so that you might know that Jesus is the Christ. Okay? I think that's what we, what we ended last week. Right? The fact that Jesus is the Christ. So, so these signs, these things are good, but more importantly, they're proclaiming who Jesus is. And so as we go along, right, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So in Hebrews chapter 4, um, verse 12, it starts to really expand this out. Okay, so we're talking about the Word of God, sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, we're not talking about the physical aspect of a sword, right? But what does this physical, or what does the sword of God's Word do in our lives? How many of you spend time reading the Bible? And I don't mean this to be like a, a, a judgment thing, right? But how many of you spend time reading the Bible? On a monthly basis, a weekly basis, daily basis. All right. So, um, as you okay, let's let's not do it in the in the reading part aspect because probably not a lot of people do that. Um, what about? in church, when you hear God's word, when you hear the scriptures read, what are some of the things that you feel? How does the, how does the word strike you sometimes? Which words do you like to hear? Which words do you not like to hear? What do you like to hear from the Bible? Gospel? Gospel? What do you not like to hear? The law, right? And what is the law? We're all condemned to hell from our for, because of our sin, right? And 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 when you look at the Ten Commandments, right? How do do you guys like to hear honor your father and mother? Every children's message, right? That's probably the biggest one, right? Because it's, honor your father and mother. Nick, do you honor your father and mother? Hmm? No. How does that make you, James? Do you honor your father and mother? <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> Every single time. All the time. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right then. So, how does that make you feel? That I will honor my father and mother. Yeah. Uh, he's expecting me to feel bad about myself. Okay. I thought he was going to go deeply guilty. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. The whole point is I want Jane, I want Jane, I want Nick to feel bad. You do feel bad about yourself. Too. You're a terrible kid. You're a terrible person. Right? I am. Um, <laughs> when, when Jesus says, if you if you call your brother a fool, you're liable to the hells of fire, to the fire of hells. Fire, fire of hell, the hellfire. Yeah, all of them, right? When, when, you, when you say that about somebody else, to their face or not, and Jesus says, if you've done that, you, you're still guilty of murder. Right? How does it make you feel? Rachel, how does it make you feel? You give, me the, you give me the Sunday school answers. Yes, we all know confirmation. Pastor Schultz did a great job of teaching you guys that the law should make us feel like we're going to go to hell. But do you really feel like you're going to go to hell if you make fun of somebody? It was clarifying. That wasn't my answer. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Now I don't even remember what I was going to 
Oh, it's my fault. I'm no, sorry. I'm the evil pastor. Be but, uh, <laughs> when you hear those words, how does it make you feel that, that God's word is condemning you? How does it make you feel? A little scared, a little sad. Anybody ever think, well, that's a little harsh, God. I mean, really, if I call my little brother a fool or an idiot, are you really going to condemn me to hell for that? I feel like I've been taught the gospel so well that I don't really think about the law as much as I should. Well, and I think because of the gospel, it doesn't really feel harsh because we have the opportunity to uh, for remittances of our sin and so yes every sin is equal and equally damning but every sin is also or can be equally forgiven and you know so. yeah There's some stories that I tell that I, I know I've told them over and over and over again, but some of them are just really important. There was a guy that I used to teach with, and, and I remember him telling me, he goes, he goes, Mike, so you're telling me that there is a guy who could be the most repulsive person on the earth, who, who a murderer, a pedophile, a rapist, this guy, if on his deathbed he says, Jesus, I am sorry, Please forgive me, that God will forgive him. But yet you've got another guy who's lived a great life. He's helped his family. He's been doing all stuff for charity, but he doesn't believe in God, and that guy, that guy goes to hell. He goes, I just can't believe that. That's hard, right? But I think for us, we're, we're in this, we're in a, uh, this really weird middle ground, right? Because we're not the rapists and the murderers and the killers in the sense of like the physical killing. I mean, obviously, we've all probably said something stupid about other people and called them idiots and fools. I've done that. Talking about politicians, I, 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 I should be burning in hell right now because I, I talk about politicians badly because I really shouldn't, but they, they just hurt me. But, for the most part, we're in the middle ground, right? We're not these evil people who have, who, have, who have forsaken God's word for all of our lives, and then at the last moment we're going to ask God to forgive us, but we're also not unbelievers. right? We've lived with the gospel, and I think, I think you're exactly right. The fact that we have lived with the gospel for so long, and we've become so comfortable with it, right, that the loss doesn't seem to affect us as much. Right? That's probably not Exactly, right? Because then you kind of get this idea of, of, of cheap grace, right? The fact that, okay, I know I shouldn't do this, but if I do, God's going to forgive me. Yeah. Anybody ever thought that? A lot. And, and, it's, and it's, it's equally... Um, it's, it's just as bad, I say just as bad, this sounds really bad, right? But that we have confession and absolution in the church service every Sunday. So does that mean that throughout the whole week, I can live like a complete scumbag, but then I go to church on Sunday morning, and the pastor told me I'm forgiven. I don't think so. I don't think if you just fall into the monotony of church and, um, just say it with the crowd. I don't think that's a true confession. And there's so much to this, right? I think it's because what is repentance? To turn away from it. Good, good Sunday school answer. Yes. But what is repentance? It's also saying I, I'm not going to do it again, or at least I'm going to try to not do it again. I yeah. think repentance um, indicates that you're going to turn away from that action. Yeah. We're going to turn away from it. It is something that is just, it is, you want to, and again, I don't, I don't want to make this about feelings, because 
feelings are, are fallible, right? You don't want to make it about feelings, but you, you should feel awful because of the law. And you should, you should honestly, in your heart, say, like, I wish I wouldn't do that. Does anybody have those, those sins in your life that, oh my gosh, I, I know I shouldn't do this, right? I mean, every, uh, I, I, I listen to uh, pro-life and pro-choice type topics all the time, right? And I just get so irritated with these pro-choice people, right? Because, because oh, it, my choice, my body, my choice, and, and all this stuff, right? Well, it's not about your body. It's about the body of this child that you're going to rip out of there and kill. And I get so mad. Now, I, when I get mad, then I feel guilty, because I really, I really do. Because it's like, I want these people to hear God's word and to understand that what they're doing is they're proponents of murder. And I want them to hear that and to understand it and, and hear the good news. But I get mad at them. And that's, that's sinful. Right? I, I, because, and it's not that I just get mad. Okay? Sometimes I think bad thoughts. I'm a sinner. Right? So every time that I hear those things, I struggle because I know, I know the difference. I know that I shouldn't be getting so upset. I should feel sorry for them. Because many of these people either don't know Christ or they are members of churches that, quite honestly, I don't know if they're Christian. Because how can, you be a, how can you be a Christian church if you don't teach what's here? Or if you take what's here and you twist it around so that way it doesn't actually fit with what's being taught here. And I feel sad for those people too. But then I get mad. And I think bad thoughts. And again, I have to come back every Sunday and say, Saying bad things about our politicians, think bad things about pro choice people, thinking bad things, I mean, just all these things, right? How does the word work in your life? Too often, I think. And I'm not doing this as a, as a uh, make you feel bad, make you want to do this, uh, right? But how often do you get into the Word? How often do you let God teach you outside of church? Church is easy because parents make us go, they put us in the car, they drag us here. And I know some of you guys would go to church anyway without it, and that's fine. <clears throat> but church isn't just a Sunday thing, right? Your life as a Christian is more than just a Sunday morning thing. When we look at identity and, and who we are, Right? And, and we talked about this in, in baptism. You are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In or into that name. So that name is now yours. You are Christian. And so that should affect every aspect of your life. It should affect the way that you, that when, when you get up in the morning and you decide which clothes to put on. Your, your life as a Christian should, should do that, right? Can you ladies put on as skimpy as outfits as you want? Your life as a Christian should help you to understand that yeah, that's probably not a good idea, right? Your life as a Christian should, should influence who you choose as friends, 
where you go on a, on a Friday or a Saturday night. Your life as a Christian should influence um, schools that you go to, um, careers that you, you, you pick, all of these things. Because every aspect of your life should be influenced by your life in Christ. And I know for the kids, it's like, you know, they have a chance to do some, um, some traveling soccer teams. But the, a lot of the teams, they travel every weekend. They travel, they play games on Sunday mornings, and, and you can't do that. So we chose a league that would allow them to play on Saturday, and that's it. It affects every aspect of your life. So when we look at the word here, right, when we look at, at how God's word works in you, Psalm 119, 105 says, what time is it? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. What does that mean? Your word is a light, or is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. Oh, that just shows you how to live by his good life. Mm hmm. Okay. You were going to say something? Yeah. Um, like, cause, like, if you think about like a dark path and you can't see, there's like most likely going to be a lot of stumbling and troubles, but if you have something like a light to guide us on that dark path, Yeah, those are those are two <clears throat> similar but, but really good answers, right? Um, how to live your life, right? When you look at the law, we talk about you know, the three uses of the law, you know, the, the curb, the mirror, and the, and the guide, right? The guide is what you're talking about there. That's the thing that's going to help you to know which direction I need to go, right? And yours is kind of in a similar in a similar vein, right? It's it's you you're you're when you are living in darkness, right? You don't know what evil is out there. You don't know what pitfalls there are. Remember, I did, I did a sermon once talking about um, uh, in the middle of the night I got up and, and um, walking through the house in the middle of the night, it was dark and I had to go to the bathroom and I remember walking through the house and I stepped on a Lego. Have you ever stepped on a Lego? They hurt. Like, I mean, literally cut my foot hurt. Right? If I would have had the light on, I could have seen this thing. This evil, vile tool of Satan to kill people. Legos are awful. Right? But, the light helps you to see the dangers out there. Right? So as you read the scriptures, and it talks about beware of, of the, the harlot, beware of the, the world and what the world says, and, 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 and trying to find out how to live for the world. Right? It, it teaches us, it tells us these things, so that whenever we're out there, we can be aware of it. Right? We could be like Hebrews, that talks about, you know, don't get in the habit of not going like... like or, or, gathering like other people are, but instead meet all the more so you can encourage people. Again, paraphrasing, right? But the biggest thing that God's Word does for you is forgiveness. Life. Salvation. And, and, and as we and as we look at that, we can look at that in, in, in the church service, right? The first time when we come together, what's one of the first things that we do? Which is one of the first of God's word, words that we use in the church service? Yeah, 
Yeah, the, the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Whose words? They're God's words, right? We are baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The reminder of our baptism. How does God's word work in baptism? It gives us forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Okay? After that, we have a little bit more of God's word. Confession and absolution. Right? God's word. God's word of forgiveness. Not from me. From God. And then we get into the service of the word. Right? We hear God's word. Scripture read. Pastor preaches. Whose word? God's word. After that... <clears throat> We offer up our, or we do our, we, we do the uh, confession of faith. We do the prayers, and then we have the Lord's Supper, right? And again, why do you call it the Lord's Supper? Who's presiding over that meal? Christ. And in, the, and in that, and in that, we receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. Even the benediction. Even the benediction is, is a pronouncement of who we are, right? It is, it is, it is a, a pronunciation of us being the Lord's. How he will bless us and keep us. And his face will shine on us, right? Not just that he's going to give us a suntan like in a tiny booth, right? His face will shine on us. It will give us glory. God's word is all throughout. And actually, if you, if you look at your if you look at your bulletins, right? In the bulletins, if you look at the, each section, it talks about in the scriptures where we get these things. Okay? So next time we're going to look at that and see how God's word permeates every aspect of our worship service. But in all of those, the greatest thing that it gives us is forgiveness, life, and salvation. I would encourage you Take five minutes. Five minutes a day to open up the Bible and you've all got it on your phone or have access to it on your phone. Right? Take five minutes. Go to a book of the Bible that you've never read before or that you think sounds fun and read. Just for five minutes. Give it a shot and see how that starts to act in your life. Any questions? All right, let's pray and then we will uh, do, our, do our highs and lows. Gracious Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, the word that you have given to us, um, not just in the scriptures, but also Lord, in, um, in your son. Thank you for the life that he has given us, the salvation that we have through the forgiveness of sins. Pray that you would bless us as we leave here today, guided by your word. We pray that if that word would um, influence every aspect of our life. I just pray that you would help us to find that time um, that, that we need to be able to be immersed in your word. Bless us today as we leave here. Please be with those who are not here. And guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's get together. Do a, we just got a small enough group. We can do highs and lows with everybody. And then uh, say another prayer if you want.